Hello and welcome to Everyday Eternal where we try to find eternal truths in everyday situations. It's me. It's Wednesday here today and I'm in the mommy line so if you see kids in PE class back there it's because I'm waiting for my little one to get out of school and I take advantage of this time while I'm waiting to share a little bit with you. So today's title, uh, today's topic is Losing My Cultura. For those of you who do not speak Spanish, it's kind of easy when you see it to understand what the word cultura means. Um, it means culture, losing my culture. And the reason I wanted to share about this today is because Sunday, and I don't know who set up these days, but anyhow, this Sunday uh, begins, uh, Hispanic Heritage Month begins. And it's so weird because it goes from Sunday, the 15th of September to October 15th. No, it can't be like a normal, like from the first of the month to the end of the month. It has to be like taking up two months because we're just, you know, Hispanics are so extra. <laughs> Anyways, um, so Hispanic Heritage Month starts this Sunday and uh, I really wanted to make a video talking about the the power of culture but also the frailty of culture and how easily it can be lost you see i'm a youth director at a wonderful church here in florida and um, if you want to know more google it because none of the things that i say on my vlog represent the opinions of the church or my denomination but it's a great church anyhow so I am studying right now. I'm leading our students in a study through the book of Daniel. And it is all about, I mean, it starts out with this um, empire taking over and then extracting the cream of the crop, like the best. And they went as far as to mention like the most handsome guys, the smartest guys, um, the best suited to serve in the palace. Like, they picked the best of the best and they took them out of their country and brought them into the empire into babylon those of you who are reggae lovers know babylon means but anyways so they took them there and they tried to change them they tried to transform them they took three years to train them in the language in literature listen to what they're doing in sciences um, in everything that had to do with this new culture. In a sense, they even, and you know, to top it off, they even changed their names to Babylonian names, like n trying so hard to just annihilate their identity. And so as I'm studying this and sharing it with the kids, I know that a lot of them, this is a foreign concept, but um, bum, excuse the pun, um, but for a lot of us who um, are kind of bicultural and live in this this really weird world where we have several cultures, we, we're cultural chameleons, <laughs> and um, it's 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 very difficult. And especially, I think of all my friends, um, and all of us in Puerto Rico have more family probably living in the United States or around the world than on the island. The truth of the matter is there are more Puerto Ricans off of the island of Puerto Rico than on the island of Puerto Rico. And as I was thinking about Daniel and his buddies, and those, those guys were on fire, literally, like those dudes were on fire at a certain point. But anyhow, um, and how they struggled to maintain even their religious identity as Jews. So it was just not, you know, it starts with subtle things like language, uh, literature, music, and continues on to like food because literally food was involved. Guys, you got to read the book of Daniel. And then it goes on to religion and basically just trying to change who you are in all of the different realms that comprise a human being. And so um, I think of all my friends who have moved to the States and are struggling and working hard and doing all they can to give their kids the best. 
and um, to be the best representatives of our culture possible. I know all of the Puerto Ricans, and I'm so sorry for everyone else that has to put up with us um, because we have flags everywhere and we like totally show off everywhere we go that we're Puerto Rican and anytime there's a mention of Puerto Rico, you'll hear people scream, Hueva! or you know, there'll be people like screaming and, and I'm gonna turn on the car. I turned it off because it's quiet, but I'm like gonna bake in here. So, um, so Puerto Ricans are very proud, as well as people from different places. It's like people from the South, um, people from New York, etc. Um, but it is so easy to be caught up in the everyday life craziness and busyness that we forget to ensure, to instill, to perpetuate the beautiful things, the history, and the power of our cultural identity. And um, you do not have to negate or cancel out one for the other. I can be both. And I can be a citizen of the world. But I want to make sure, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. As for me and my house, we will speak English, we will speak Spanish, we will speak some French and some Italian, and we'll try to learn as many languages as we can. As for me and my house, we will eat rice and beans along with mashed potatoes and french fries. Um, as for me and my house, we will be proud of where we came from. And we know that our, our backgrounds, none of our backgrounds, no matter what country you're from or what culture you're from is perfect. I mean, there's the good, the bad, and the ugly that has happened in every culture. However, there are things that identify us and make us different. And those are things I want my son to know it doesn't mean that it makes us better it makes us different and that difference and that ability to relate to other differences and that ability to coexist and work in harmony with different uh, people and cultures is a beautiful thing it's a godly thing um, it's an amazing thing so um, some of you might know I am the founder and director of the Culture Club Puerto Rico where we taught kids in Puerto Rico about cultures all over the world, different cultures, um, and tried to expand their horizons. Now I'm in Florida and my heart is really burdened for the Puerto Ricans who have left the island and now have a second generation growing up that now has some benefits and maybe financial security that they did not have in Puerto Rico, but that their identity is so easily confused or lost in the mix. Um, we all know what happens. It only takes one generation to lose uh, a culture. If you don't speak Spanish to them, if you don't kind of force them to speak another language, they won't because, you know, it's not cool. <laughs> so, um, and if you don't have the time, which none of us really do, to sit down and on top of the homework that they have and the other stuff that they have to learn, teach them our history and our traditions as well, it is so hard. So I have decided to bring the Culture Club to Florida in the form of teaching uh, Puerto Ricans, not only Puerto Ricans, I wanna also teach other cultural aspects and other cultures to the kids in the area I'm in, in Orlando. Um, but I wanna focus first of all on the Puerto Rican children that might be losing their identity, not out of purposeful, like, uh, omission but um unintentional omission of those things that make us who we are um there are so many beautiful things about our culture and some of you might not know that i also am the uh, president the director of the john wesley multicultural center which is an initiative to celebrate uh multicultural uh roots heritage experiences and uh expressions of the Christian faith and open to anyone, uh, basically. And so I want to take this time to thank my father. You see, because the Puerto Rico Education Department was getting rid of all their books. And my father went over there and got all of the Puerto Rican history, uh, Puerto Rican literature books, 
and a lot of uh, Latin American history books and he has amassed these books and is now distributing them at different Methodist churches and so if you were not able to go to the warehouses and pick up books about Puerto Rican culture or world uh, Latin American culture or literature um, let us know because the John Wesley Multicultural Center and he is also uh, the head elder uh, on the board and um, we are here to serve you and we have these books available but we don't want them in a closet we don't want them on a shelf we want you to use them with your kids and we want them to be used here in Florida so what are we going to do I am so inspired guys because the Bible says in the book of Revelations, which is the boogeyman book, everybody's scared of. But listen to this, how beautiful this is. This is um, the vision that uh, he received and talking about what it's like, what it's going to be like when all of us are able to be together. It says, after this, I looked and there before me was a great multitude that no one could count from every nation tribe, people, and language standing before the throne and before the Lamb. And you know what they were doing? They were worshiping. This is the greatest, the final, and the eternal, everlasting, multicultural worship service in God's presence, in the presence of the Lord, at the feet of the Lamb. And you know what? Every tribe, every nation, every language, means that God does not take our identity from us when he comes into our lives and transforms us. He is a respecter. He is the creator of identities, cultural identities. And so if we want to hear Puerto Rican Spanish being sung at the throne of the Lamb, Let's work so that our children will learn, will know that we are Taino, that we are African, that we are Spaniards, all mixed together to make this crazy mishmash that we are. If in the end of all things, there is racial, cultural harmony, then let us work so that each person celebrates their culture and is identified at that time when we are before the Lamb worshiping. So this is what we're going to do. Um, I had planned to do a workshop focusing on the Taino Indians, which are our indigenous people that were um, wiped out, but not successfully because in our blood, the blood flows. Um, and we were going to do this on the 18th of October, which is the week right at the end, you know, after Hispanic uh, Heritage Month, but it was on the Friday, but Hurricane Dorian took away our Friday off. So now it'll be on the 19th of October. What are we gonna do? We're going to have a whole workshop for two hours for kids from five years older if they are younger and you can be with them and take care of them that's awesome but we don't want to interrupt the older kids from learning and participating we're going to do crafts we're going to have indigenous face painting we're going to um, learn taino words we're going to taste taino food it's going to be a lot of fun and we're hoping to do this on the 19th of october somewhere in Orlando. I'm in Winter Garden, but we're, we're hoping to find a spot where we can uh, all celebrate culture together. And if you're not Puerto Rican, we invite you to come and learn about our indigenous uh, roots, uh, cultural roots. It's going to be fun. It's going to be for kids. It's going to be um, eye-opening. And hopefully it's going to inspire your young people to uh, be proud of who they are and who God chose to make them. Puerto Ricans, Irish, uh, Scottish, French, Haitian, whatever it is that God allowed you to be. Be proud of it and make sure that when this big multicultural worship service in the presence of the Lamb occurs, your voice will be heard 
your culture will be represented because you did what you had to do to continue on and to pass down your faith, number one, your language, your culture, and all of the wonderful, wonderful things that make you who you are. God bless you and stay tuned for this workshop that we'll be having soon in October 19th, 19th somewhere in Orlando, uh, helping at least the Puerto Rican children know about their culture.